Recently on my main channel, I built this MB2 from DIY Recording Equipment, which is a mic booster kit. It's a super simple build, inexpensive, and uh, you can kind of build it in about an hour. It was fun to do it on a live stream. So in this video, I will kind of narrate over the footage from that really condensed down to maybe five minutes, uh, explaining my experience building this and what's involved in that. And through that section, you will hear me going through this with the SM7B and then into my audio interface um, during the voiceover sections. The MB2 from DIYRecordingEquipment.com is a two-channel stereo mic booster kit. This gives you a fixed 26 dB of gain for any dynamic or ribbon microphone. It's powered by phantom power. And since dynamic mics and ribbon mics don't need phantom power, uh, this works perfectly and doesn't pass on phantom power through uh, the XLR connection. So this is fantastic for any sort of noisier preamp um, or any time that you need to record something a little bit hotter than line level and you want to avoid as much noise as possible from possibly a noisy mixer or noisy preamp. This gives you a little boost right after the mic uh, connected in line before your mic preamp or audio interface. There are a lot of other products like this on the market. This is one of the cheapest, and part of that is because you do it yourself. If you have a little bit of skills with soldering, you should have no trouble at all. So here I'm just unwrapping the package, examining all the parts, seeing if everything's there, seeing how things are packaged. And at this point, I was actually a little bit surprised at how fairly small this uh, kit is. And here I'm just showing off some of the previous kits that I've built from them. I've known Peterson from DIY Recording Equipment pretty much since the beginning, and uh, I got to use the first versions of the Ferrite Transformer DI, which has a Cinemag Transformer, really excellent, and the Line 2 Amp, which is a simple passive reamp box. Transformer based, super simple, uh, line in one side, guitar level output on the other side. And here's the circuit board, well laid out, everything is labeled. You need some basic equipment like soldering iron, solder, wire cutters, Phillips head screwdriver. It's helpful to have a multimeter. I also found it helpful to have a magnifying glass to identify the resistors and to uh, just verify that all my solder joints were good. Here I'm just getting all of the resistors organized. Uh, you have to bend each one and put it into a specific slot on the board. and under the lights that I have for streaming, and because some of the stripes are blue on a blue resistor, I was having quite a bit of trouble actually figuring out which, uh, which resistor is which. And so after a bit of troubleshooting, squinting, using the magnifying glass, dropping some on the floor, I did manage to sort them out into the four different values. I ended up using the multimeter to do this. That's the best way to do it. If you have a multimeter and you should definitely do this. But identifying all of the resistors in this way still wasn't enough to prevent me from making a mistake. Here I'm soldering the first set of resistors in. And at this point, I don't know that I've selected the wrong pile of resistors or else the right pile, but the wrong slots. I got them all consistently in the holes, but they're all the wrong values. Here I'm figuring out what the process will be for removing these uh, eight solder joints. I'm using the solder sucker bulb, heating it up, and then quickly uh, releasing the bulb, which sucks the solder in. They are not the best method, this particular one. There's better solder suckers out there, but this is what I've got. In this case, what I found to work was a combination of the solder sucker and putting the helping hands alligator clip onto one of the legs of the resistor, heating it up, and then kind of prying, gently pulling on the, uh, the resistor to get it out. Jumping ahead a bit, at this point, I've got all of the resistors into the board with all of the legs trimmed and next it's the transistors. There are four of these black BC327 transistors. They are clearly labeled on the board with a semicircle shape and uh, 
that matches, it's very easy to line that up. There are four of those black transistors and then two of these other type uh, with the gold and uh, five pins, I think it was. And I'm just pointing out that they're clearly marked and you can't really mess that up. Jumping ahead now, I've got four of those transistors soldered in and now I'm just slightly bending out the pins to uh, make them all fit into the slots for the larger transistor. These transistors aren't at all difficult to put in. They fit easily uh, with lots of space for soldering if, as long as you've got you know, any decent soldering iron should have a small enough tip to do that comfortably. And it's a very quick process, maybe 30 seconds for each of them. You can really only put them in the correct way. And uh, that's just a matter of clipping all of the leads. And that's it. At this point, I'm showing off my Triton Fethead, which is the first mic booster I ever bought. Uh, they're like $100 or so. They go in line directly after the microphone. They're fine. They don't have a sound. They're not noisy. They're, you know, they, they do the job for sure. But uh, I rarely use it with my SM7B. After the transistors, we're putting in the capacitors. There are three different types of capacitors that are being used on this board. First is the non-polarized uh, capacitors, which don't matter which direction you put them in. There's the four yellow ones and the four blue ones. Clearly marked, clearly a different shape, and you can't really mess that up. Then there are a couple of polarized uh, electrolytic capacitors, and these do have a correct way to insert into the, uh, the board. Again, clearly marked on the board which is the correct orientation for these. Nearly done with all the soldering, uh, just the jacks need to be installed into the panel plates. They need to be lightly screwed in, then mounted to the board, soldered in, then the faceplate is removed before the board gets slid into the box. At this point, I'm mounting the jacks onto the circuit board and getting them all soldered in. Do, um, do one end at a time, solder them in, then remove the faceplate. If you try to do both sides at the same time as you're soldering, you'll just end up knocking one side loose and you'll have to start over. But yeah, it, it makes a very sturdy fit. The box is extremely sturdy. Very impressed with that. Nice and uh, solid. You need to solder in both sides of the jacks with the faceplate on, and then you need to remove one faceplate to slide it into the box. A little bit confusing maybe, but uh, that helps keeps things square, aligned perfectly and all that. So fitting it into the box for the first time looks good. Lots of clearance below, so nothing's going to short out. And just need to affix that last faceplate and it is done. So that's my experience with the MB2 stereo mic booster from DIY recording equipment. Highly recommend this. It's a great way to get more clean gain for your dynamic mics. Makes recording easier when you got a quiet voice, when you're doing podcasting or anything else requiring a lot of gain on a dynamic mic.